Hey guys, let's take a look at ancient Indian sculptures that show the theory of evolution with remarkable accuracy. By the end of this video, I hope you will agree with me that evolution was understood and documented 2000 years before Darwin ever came up with the idea. To understand this, let's take a look at this structure called Ryer Gopuram in Mahabalipuram. This was built around 7th century AD, so it is over 1400 years old. The reason why this entire structure was left unfinished is because a sculptor made a simple mistake in carving this pillar. This pillar was carved based on the Hindu concept called Dashavatara and these 10 life forms were first documented in the scripture called Bhagavad Gita written around 500 BC. At the top you can see that he carved a figure with a farmer's plow below a figure carved with a bow and arrow but it should have been the other way around. This mistake was so serious that the sculptors stopped carving and abandoned the entire structure. Why was the order of these figures so important? I mean, these are all gods, so how does the order of their appearance matter so much that the ancient Hindus could abandon years of work put into this amazing structure? It matters because it shows evolution with incredible accuracy. The first figure shows a fish which dominated the planet 535 million years ago. This is called Matsya in India and in modern evolution theory, fishes are regarded as the first large animals that swarmed all over the planet. In some Indian temples, this form is shown simply as a fish and some carvings even show fish evolving into other creatures. For example, in this sculpture in Bitargon Temple, you will see that the fins are changing into legs and the mouth is evolving into a different shape. The second figure shows a turtle called Kurma in Sanskrit and signifies that aquatic animals evolved into amphibians. This is confirmed by Darwin who shows that animals from the sea became amphibians and were capable of living in both land and water. Again, in many Hindu temples, you can see the turtle carved completely as a turtle. In this sculpture, you can see how a turtle emerges out of water while surrounded by other fishes. The third figure is called Varaha, which shows the emergence of rodents and wild boars. Note that we have now entered the age of mammals because all rodents are mammals. Also, it is interesting to realize that we are looking at animals that completely live in land and not water anymore. This is also confirmed by modern evolution theory. The fourth figure called Narasimha shows a very large lion which is the Smilodon or a similar species which is now extinct. Paleontologists agree that these big cats dominated the planet and hunted mammoths and other giant animals. Incredibly, this scene is accurately portrayed in this 12th century sculpture which shows a lion as big as the elephant itself. In other temples, Narasimha is shown as half lion and half man which shows a hybrid hominid like creature. The fifth figure shows Vamana who is always portrayed as a dwarf. Now we know that Neanderthals were never more than five feet tall. Other early human like species like Homo floresiensis were only three and a half feet tall. Notice how Vamana is portrayed with tools but not any weapons. This indicates how the Neanderthals and other human-like species were starting to make use of objects like sticks and stones to survive. 
The sixth figure shows a bearded man with long hair carrying a simple axe. He's called Parasurama in Sanskrit. This is the first human being or homo sapien who used crude weapons. The evolution of all other species is not shown beyond this point and Hinduism continues to show the social and psychological evolution of human beings alone. Why? Because human beings would be the dominating species on earth after this point in time. Let's ignore the sculptor's mistake for a minute and put these two figures in proper order. The next form is a very popular god called Rama. He is always shown with a bow and arrow symbolizing the transformation of primitive men into hunter-gatherers. Rama was a very moral man and was very obedient to his parents. This shows the psychology and simplicity of early human beings. The next figure shows Balarama who is always carved with a plow. Why? Because hunter-gatherers started domesticating plants and became farmers. Agriculture was developed and propelled human civilization to a new height. Now you can see how the sculptor made a terrible mistake and carved the hunter after the farmer. This does not fit the evolution theory and makes the entire carving pointless. Ironically, the modern day Hindus who are considered scientifically advanced are completely okay with mistakes like this. For example, the modern day statue shows Parasurama, the first homo sapien, with an axe and a bow and arrow making it completely pointless. And other modern day philosophers and sculptors have completely removed the farmer or Balarama and inserted Lord Buddha. However, to the so-called primitive people who lived thousands of years ago, such a mistake was unacceptable and they completely abandoned the entire structure. Okay, back to evolution. The ninth form is Lord Krishna who was a very powerful charismatic god. He is often portrayed as what we call worldly wise or street smart according to our standards. He was able to outwit others and sometimes had to resort to devious ways to defeat his enemies. This shows the world as it is today and we have to be street smart to survive. Notice how he has an advanced disc shaped weapon that can strike the enemy and return back to him symbolizing the new age of technology. The tenth form is the final life form where Hinduism surpasses the modern theory of evolution and predicts the future. Remember that we are looking at all the life forms that dominated planet earth since millions of years. So what would the final dominant species look like? Mm -hmm.